You may have found that the CubeJS wiki was a little bit lacking, so here's five CubeJS examples. The first functionality that we'll look at is right-clicking actions. I've set it up so that when I right-click this iron nugget, it spawns in a cow at my position, and you can see it also deleted the iron nugget. I also set it up so that when I right-click a cow with a gold ingot, transforms it into an aether cow. The way that this works, this first one is pretty easy. We just use the item events dot right click and we can check if the item that we right clicked is an iron nugget. And if it is, get the block that the player is at, which is where our feet are. Then we say create entity. Then we say just spawn that new entity we just created. Then we want to subtract one from our iron nugget count. Very simple. To transform the cow into the flying cow, it's pretty similar. Except this time we use item events dot entity interacted. Compared to before when we used a right click, that's just when you right click in the air. This one is when you actually right click on an entity. A cleaner syntax that you can use. If you're only going to check one item, instead of getting your code really far indented so that it goes off your screen, what you can do instead is check at the beginning. Are they not holding that item? If they're not holding the item that you care about, then just stop your function right there. It helps make your script cleaner. If we got down to this section, that means they must be holding a gold ingot. We can check the entity that they're looking at with this syntax. A common mistake when using entity interacted is you might say event dot entity, but that's wrong. That's the player that right clicked. If you want to get the entity that they were looking at, it's get target dot entity type. And useful for debugging purposes, you can say event dot server dot tell. This just prints in the chat whatever this variable was. In this case, it's the entity type. Since we're transforming cows here, we check if the entity name was equal to entity.minecraft.cow. Again, for debugging, you can leave this in, but it's not necessary. Like we saw in the first example, we can get the block that an entity is at and say create entity and then just spawn it. As for the original cow that we right clicked, we just teleport them out of the world. So we're not exactly transforming, we're swapping out, but it gives the effect of transforming. Next, let's look at this. If I spawn a zombie over here, you can see from the one probe how much health it has. But if we go in the taiga biome, it has 30 hearts. So depending on the biome, I can change the mob max health that it starts with. To give the zombie more health depending on biome, we use the entity events dot check spawn. First we get the entity and then the biome that it spawned in, which we can get using this here, entity.block.biomeid.toString. That gives us this format where it's the mod name and the biome. Now we only want to multiply the health if it's a monster. That's a built-in we can check. And the way I've set this up, I can have a list of all of the biomes where I want mob health to be multiplied. So if this list includes the biome ID that they spawned in, and let's them multiply their max health, so we'll set it to be their current max health times three. Then we want to set the health value that they have right now to be whatever their max. I have changed the dirt drops. You can see it drops gravel instead of dirt, and it's also dropping experience points but it also has a chance to drop sand instead. You see this currently drops a dirt and a gravel. We can change that. If I add in remove loot ingredient.all, then it will no longer drop dirt and it will instead only do what I've specified below. Let's reload. CubeJS reload doesn't work on the loot tables. Instead you have to use the default reload. Let's try that again. See that we got sand, gravel that time, gravel, this one's pretty self-explanatory. You have to use the loot.js add-on for cube.js. Then we can get the event and say add block loot modifier. You can also modify entities if you want. But in this case, we're modifying Minecraft dirt. As I showed before, you can use remove loot to clear that whole loot table. This one's extra. If you want to drop experience, you can specify the amount. But the main thing was add weighted loot. You can specify an item and the chant. So it's going to roll a number from 1 to 30 in this case. If it's 20 or below, gonna be gravel if it's 21 or above and we drop sand here's another transforming variant except this time with a block here are some sweet berries i right click with a diamond it harvests them but if i right click again it turns it into an aether berry stem and you can see only then does it subtract one from my hand count i have 26 still 26 but now 25 to do this it's similar to before except this time we're using block events dot right clicked it detects when we're right clicking on a block instead of just in the air for example if we're clicking on something that's not a berry bush or its age property is three, that means it has berries on it, as you can see from the right side of the screen. 
In that case, we don't do anything. If we got past that, and we're holding a diamond, then we want to set the block to be Aether Berry Bush Stem, and then we shrink our count by one. If you want more CubeJS help, then join the CubeJS Discord, or subscribe to me for more Mod Minecraft analysis and tips. Other than that, thanks for watching.